Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy, Two Scoops. And today, or tonight, because it's, it's late, you guys don't know that, though. I want to talk about a movie, of course. This is Movie Talk with Two Scoops. But as you can see by the video, or the lack thereof, I'm trying something a little bit different this time. So I'm trying something new where I'm actually on my way to work right now, and I thought, I talked to you guys about this movie. So, if you can't tell by the thumbnail, today we're talking about Spider-Man No Way Home. Uh, I wanted initially to do this video immediately after I saw the movie, which was the day that it came out. But, well, clearly that didn't happen. So now, instead of doing a uh, review well, I mean, it's a review, but now instead of doing a traditional review of, uh, you know, I like this movie for this reason or whatever, or I didn't like this movie for that, I just kind of want to talk about this movie and what it meant to me and probably a lot of Spider-Man fans and probably a lot of Marvel fans. So when we first saw that trailer and it had Doc Ock from the uh, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man 2 and Willem Dafoe, Green Goblin, from uh, the original Sam Raimi Spider-Man 1, the level of excitement that I felt I didn't think could be matched, even though seeing those villains made me think they definitely have to have Toby at least in this movie, and Andrew too, because even though they didn't uh, show any villains from Andrew in that first uh, or second trailer. I don't think the first trailer showed anything, but um, even though they didn't show any villains from Andrew Garfield's universe, you know if they bring Toby back, they have to bring Andrew back. It's just, it, it didn't make sense to only bring one of them back. But I'm saying all of this to say that um, the excitement that I felt from just the idea of those two characters returning, I thought couldn't be matched. And uh, spoiler warning, of course, hopefully if everybody's seen the movie by now, if you haven't, then I think you you probably don't care about spoilers. You just want to, you've probably been spoiled already. I'm sure it's all over social media, which is part of the reason that I knew I had to see it the first day because I knew it was going to be spoilers everywhere. But anyway, um, yeah, I thought that, excite that excitement could have been matched, but sitting down in a the theater... And the moment that they came onto screen was one of the most exciting experiences that I have had in my 24, almost 25. I'm recording this the day before my birthday. Um, one of the greatest cinematic experiences I've ever had. And again, reinforced in me the power of the movie theater that experience would not have been anywhere near as exciting had I not been in a jam-packed theater. Hopefully everybody had their mask on. Jam-packed theater with everybody cheering. I was cheering. I have never in my life cheered during a movie scene. But when Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire showed up in this movie, I cheered. I clapped because to me... That is something that I never thought that I would see. I don't know about past generations and, and characters that have been admired by past generations, but to me, we are stepping into an age where almost anything is possible movie-wise, where we can have characters or actors who've who have played the same character, but over a course of over, I think 20 years, 20 years now, three different actors playing the same character all come together to create something that did exist in the comics. The Spider-Verse did exist. It wasn't um, as soon as Spider-Man came out, I know that, but it is something that has happened in the comics. So this is something that was unthought of. When Tobey Maguire Spider-Man hit screams, they didn't even know if that movie was gonna be as successful as it was. So all of these years later, from 2002 to 2021, to have all of these characters 
all of these actors portraying this same character in different ways, man, I don't even really want to talk specifically about every detail of the movie, just my overall thoughts and the things that stood out to me. One of the main things that stood out to me, probably my favorite scene, um, uh, besides when they show up, is when Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man, catches MJ, the emotion that he was able to convey in just a split second, you felt it, you understood the bitter sweetness of it. You saw him go back to that moment where he couldn't save Gwen and you saw that sadness in him. And then you immediately saw that relief knowing that he was successful in catching MJ. Like, Andrew Garfield needs his flowers. I don't remember, honestly, I can't say, I don't remember if I hated The Amazing Spider-Man. I couldn't have hated it. I just found my box of DVDs and I have the original, um, original. I have The Amazing Spider-Man, the first one, in there. So clearly I liked that movie. I don't think I ever put him above Toby. Um, I still probably don't put him above Toby because Toby just holds a special place. That being the first Spider-Man, I mean, nostalgia always, for the most part, is going to win. You, at a certain point, you can't take nostalgia out of the conversation. He was the OG, um, so he's always going to have a place. But I never hated Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, but I don't think that I appreciated him as much as I probably should have or could have. But man, do I appreciate him now and everything that he brought to the character and all of the the acting that went beyond the suit. Because that's one thing I can say. Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, when he was behind that mask, felt like a different person. And I mean, um, Tom Holland, when he's behind the mask, they have that animated thing now where, you know, with the eyes to kind of make it more comic book accurate. So they do a lot of the expressions and stuff through that. But Andrew is in such a sweet spot where he has that mask that can emote with the CGI. But with his body language, you still understand exactly what he's feeling at any time and that is something that needs more credit than it gets he is so able to characterize the character without even seeing his face give him his flowers but yeah i it made me go back and um revisit the amazing spider-man 2 I watched it on YouTube. Actually, I bought it on YouTube. So I officially own all three sequels on uh, YouTube. I don't know why I got the sequels before the original. But I mean, I have The Amazing Spider-Man on DVD. And I have a DVD player, so I can watch that at any time. But um, yeah. Uh, and also, Tom Holland. People, I won't say give him his flowers because people do give him his respect. People already pretty much give him his flowers, but still, I think that this by far was the best Spider-Man movie that we've seen Tom Holland in, including Civil War, including Far From Home. I thought Far From Home was really good. I loved it. I, I Again, that was the first uh, movie that I bought on YouTube. I really liked Far From Home. But the character growth and development that he displayed in this movie just took it to another level. And then when you take into account that the events of No Way Home and Far From Home literally are back to back, because clearly we know that it literally picks up from where we left off in Far From Home. But still, because it's been over a year since we saw that movie, most of us anyway, uh, because it wasn't until I revisited it that it really dawned on me that MJ and, and Peter have only been dating for maybe like two weeks. There's that part in the trailer where he says, you know, ever since I got bit by that spider, there's only been one week of my life that's felt normal. Um, and that was when you found out. He's talking about like last week. 
or, or the week before that. Like they haven't even been dating that long. And when you take that into consideration and then look at where this movie ends, it's such a traumatic ending. Not well, I don't want to say traumatic, but it's not like there aren't deaths at the end. There is a death. Um, but this movie doesn't end on a death per se. It you know, it just ends with them, Ned and, and MJ and nobody remembering who Peter Parker is or that he exists or whatever. And that's sad because he didn't even really get a chance to, you know, do his thing with his boot thing, you know? He didn't get a chance to really experience that. They had just got together. She had just found out who he was. He had just started to feel like he had, you know, a team. And now all of that is gone. And he's officially on his own, which is probably one of the next most exciting things about this is that now he has officially become that Peter Parker from the comics where he's officially become that Spider-Man, that lonely, you know, giving up everything that Peter Parker wants to, you know, be that friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. That's where we leave him in this movie. And so I just thought that that was cool. I don't know if anybody else felt like, you know, that was something that caught them. For me, I, I just, I hadn't put that much thought into it. I knew the stuff took place right after the events of uh, Far From Home, but I hadn't really taken into account just how close those events were. But um... Okay, so for a second, I, I want to talk about uh, this fight scene between Tom Holland and Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin. But before we even get to the fight scene, I want to talk about the lead up to the fight scene and the Spidey sense. And honestly, I don't know if Marvel or uh, yeah, if Marvel simply forgot to incorporate the Spidey sense in Homecoming. They said that it was there, but, you know, it just wasn't as strong or whatever. I don't know what it is, uh, but either way, they've made up for it because in this movie, and I've also heard some theories, well, not theories, in the comic books, when different Spider-Man come to the same universe, it's supposedly, and not supposedly, it intensifies all of their Spidey sense. So maybe that has something to do with it. But in this movie, the way they filmed the Spidey sense was really interesting. And I really liked, I really liked it. So what they did was... um it's this camera trick. I don't remember what the name of it is, but it was uh, created by uh, Alfred Hitchcock. And what they do is they zoom in with the camera, but at the same time, dolly out. So what that means is, if you don't know, so uh, the difference between a zoom and a dolly is with a dolly, you're physically moving the camera forward or backward in a zoom you're what well, you're zooming in so the camera is still stationary and so what they do is they physically move the camera in one direction while zooming in the opposite direction in the opposite direction and it creates this distorted uh image that is it's just really cool to look at and so they use that technique with the spidey sense and immediately you feel that something is off and in this scene leading up to the fight is when Willem Dafoe uh when the Green Goblin first takes over Norman and so his spidey sense is triggered but he doesn't know where specifically the danger is and so it's this really cool scene of him walking through the apartment and he has all of these villains around him and you can just see the paranoia on his face and the distrust as he looks around at all of these villains and he's trying to figure out who it is. And then he closes his eyes and he focuses for a second and he and he focuses in on Green Goblin. And he, you know, he webs his hands or something. But I just thought that that was really cool and it really showed how powerful the Spidey sense is because I think that it's kind of been not slept on because in the Sam Raimi trilogy, they utilize the Spidey sense a lot. 
but I think this is the closest that it's been to really showing what that feels like. In the Sam Raimi trilogy, we saw basically what his sense alerted him to, but this is the first time that we've seen him get the sense, but not immediately know what is wrong. I think that's the best way to describe it. And I really like that. But after that, the fight that takes place between Tom Holland and Green Goblin is one of the best fight scenes in the Marvel Universe. I still have to say that the choreography in Winter Soldier is some of the best and probably still my favorite. But this fight scene was so intense and so brutal. Actually, I take that back. This is probably my new favorite fight scene in the Marvel Universe because it gets so brutal, it's so real. And this is the first time, if you, I don't know if you noticed, but in this movie is the first time that we actually see Tom Holland Spider-Man throw a punch. Until then, he's dodged, he's used uh, his enemies' attacks against them. He uh, He's done, he's webbed them up, but he hasn't thrown punches. This is the first time that we see him throw punches and this dude is throwing some haymakers. Some of the moves that he uses in this fight scene, man, it's just brutal. They're fighting, they're breaking through concrete floors in this apartment, and, and, and it's just intense, and I love it. And it's probably going to go down as one of the best fight scenes in a Marvel Cinematic Universe. I haven't seen Shang-Chi, so I can't. I can't include that in there. Maybe they got some really good fight scenes. I know they have some really good fight scenes. Maybe they have some that's better than this one. But this is the best fight scene that I've seen in the Marvel Universe so far. And this is the first time that we've seen Tom Holland get this intense. And it is, it is beautiful to watch. And then this fight scene ends with the death of Aunt May. Which was... It didn't hit me super hard. I felt bad for the character, for um, for Spider-Man in this scene. But I can't say that I personally felt really bad. And it. it's nothing against this version of Aunt May. But it's probably that she just didn't have too much to do until this movie. And so maybe if in the past two movies that she's appeared in, or three if you um, count civil war maybe if she had more to do with more of an impact throughout those movies it would have hit home a little harder but either way i felt like it was necessary for this spider-man because even though it's been alluded to that he has an uncle ben and that that uncle ben died or whatever whether in this universe it was it was a direct result of something that he did or didn't do we didn't see it we didn't want to see it but we needed to see him lose somebody other than iron man that close to him because that in my opinion is what's been missing from this spider-man i've never really criticized tom holland spider-man but that has been the thing that separated him from previous spider-mans that we've seen toby and andrew is that we haven't seen him lose that figure and of course she gave him the with great power comes great responsibility although hearkening back to the original wording in the comic book which was with great power there must also come great responsibility some people i saw didn't like that she gave it or they thought that it wasn't necessary but i thought that it was necessary all spider-man need to hear those words that is what that is the moment i think when they become spider-man and if there's anything that i can take away from this movie is that this is the movie when Tom Holland becomes Spider-Man. And another thing is that Marvel, and I think it was intentional, we just couldn't see it, is that over the course of these three movies, they haven't necessarily been a traditional trilogy. These three movies have been one complete story of this character becoming Spider-Man. If you watch all of these movies back to back you'll see an origin story and that's something that i really liked i didn't expect it i didn't see it coming and i enjoyed 
each movie, each movie's entry, you know, it took it for what it was and enjoyed it. But now that I've gotten that complete trilogy, I can say that I really enjoy this way of telling a Spider-Man story. It's, it, it's the way to be different. We've already had five other Spider-Man movies, each trilogy having a uh, an origin story. This trilogy was Tom Holland's Spider-Man origin story, and I like that. Of course, the movie was funny. I don't really want to get into uh, the jokes or anything because it, it's just uh, it's funny and it's to be expected with a Marvel movie. I did think that Jamie Foxx's elect- Jamie Foxx's Electro had some of the best jokes in the movie, but everybody was funny. Everybody served their purpose well. One thing I will say is that Sandman and the Lizard. I don't know. Maybe uh. I don't remember exactly why those actors weren't on set. They just came and did the voice work or whatever. But um, it would have been nice to see them outside of their mutated form. We only saw Sandman as Sandman. We only saw the lizard as lizard until the very end when they got cured. And at that point, it was reused footage from their respected uh, movies. But that might be my only complaint and that's not even really a complaint because when i was watching the movie it didn't bother me it's just you know after having some time to think about it which i've had about three weeks now to think about this movie which i think probably benefited this video because after first seeing it it was so many thoughts so many emotions uh so much excitement that it probably i felt like it would have been hard for me to even give a concise uh review so it was nice that i had this time to let the movie marinate just a little bit um the fight with spider-man and dr strange was a really good fight scene as well and i think it slept on i slept on it uh when it's the movie was so good that stuff that just wasn't i i don't even know how to say it because i don't even want to say things that weren't as good because to me everything in this movie was done so well but it's just that some things were just done just a little bit better. And so it made you not focus on other things as much. And I think that the fight scene between Spider-Man and Doctor Strange is one of those things that kind of fall by the wayside. But I saw this movie three times in the theater. So by the second time, I really was like, oh, snap. I really overlooked this this uh, sequence here. Really good stuff. Uh yeah, I won't even go too much into detail. It was a good fight. I'm just excited to see where they go uh, from here. But overall, man, I love this movie. The growth for Tom Holland, the, the character development with this Peter Parker, the incorporation of Andrew Garfield on, and Tobey Maguire and, and all of the, you know, the villains. And, oh, man, that final swing. I can't leave y'all without talking about that final swing almost brought tears to my eyes. I don't cry too often at movies. It, it's very rare. But that scene almost got a tear out of me. That and, and, and Andrew catching MJ. But that swing, man, for some reason, that was the moment that it really became real. Like, oh my God, these dudes is in this movie. Oh, I gotta go to work, y'all. Bye.